Hello, I'm Benjamin, the Artistic Director at Hexachords, and in this video series, I'm going to be taking you over how to get a track from this... ...to something as refined as this. Welcome to another Orb Composer tutorial brought to you by Hexachords. My name is Benjamin, Artistic Director at Hexachords, and in this three-part series we'll be going over how to compose music in Orb Composer. In the first part of this series, we will discuss how to set up your template to include the instruments and sounds you want, we will do an overview of block types, structures, chord selections, and how to add additional instruments. So the first thing we're going to review is going to be the different block types. On the left, you'll see various different block types. Intros, melodic intro, theme types. These are just basically different types of intros that include themes. Then you have your uh, template blocks, your theme blocks. These are basically just shortcuts. For the most part, the only ones you need to worry about are your theme and theme variation, and of course the melodic uh, change, the one that changes the melody. The rest of them are, of course, shortcuts. Then you have your two transition blocks. You have transition and you have a silent. And then finally, you have your end blocks. Next, for block structures, we have several different types of block structures, including standard, which is basically just a melody from beginning to end. We have different question and answer types. But really, all you need to know here is that you can kind of experiment and get a feel for it. Over here, we have different types of chord structures that you can use. There's so many chord structures that are available to you in different styles, such as jazz, uplifting, fantastical, perfect cadences, and different things like that. Here we have the chord selection menu, which you don't really need to use. I wouldn't actually advise using it, as you have the option of changing chords in a much better way on the actual blocks itself. And in this one, you have your ability to change your instruments. So here you can actually add an instrument to the menu. So for example, we'll add a lead 2. So as you can see, it's very easy. You just drag and drop lead 2 into the, into the timeline, and then you have a lead 2 instrument. And now we're going to start building our track. We're going to start with an intro. And I want to make this an 8-bar intro. So to do that, I double-click on the structure type, type in 8, and then just click Enter and it's an 8-bar intro now. And then we're going to go ahead and continue building the rest of the track. I already know how I kind of want to go about this, so we're going to fast forward through a little bit of this. And now you're going to want to delete that lead too, because I'm not actually going to be using it. But next what we're going to do is drag in all of our instruments. I'm not going to show you all the patches I select. If you want to know, I'll leave a description of all the patches that I use in this particular track. But essentially I'm just dragging in all of my instruments and everything that I want to use for my samples. It's very easy, you just drag and drop. And here what I'm actually doing is muting everything but the kick drum. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to use anything but the kick drum. I don't want to use claps, I don't want to use toms or anything else. This is the type of EDM music that I'm writing that I think is more just kick drum based. And in this case I'm going to be using the Addictive Keys Lindrum. And last but not least, we're going to start to get our track together. So as you can see, Orb Composer by default sort of orchestrates everything. And I want to vertically develop this track. I want it to start small and work its way up. So I'm going to start deleting some tracks. But also what I want to do is go into the uh, Synth 1 and change the role to also be the same role as the pad. I want it to be plucky uh, chord blocks. So we're going to change it to the background role. And then we're just going to go ahead and quickly do this for all those uh, clips there that you see. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward through that process as well. And 
And the last thing I want to do is make sure that the drums kick actually stands out. So I'm going to be turning down all of the other instruments rather than turning the kick drum up so there's no clipping so that the bass drum will actually stand out. And finally, we're ready to listen to the final product. So as you can hear from that, there's actually quite a lot of problems with it, and it's not quite up to my standard of quality. In the next video, in part two, we're going to go over a lot more in depth how to get into it and really dig into the instruments to get the sounds that you want, and to really make it a professional sounding track. There's really a lot more we can do with this than what we got here. So in part two, we're going to cover a lot more of that, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe to our channel by clicking the icon on the screen. And you have recommended videos you can watch from our previous tutorial and, of course, our announcement of Orb Composer S. This was Benjamin, Artistic Director at Hexachords. Thanks for watching.